Greetings, members of Gethsemane Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Zach Roll, and this is the beginning of you, the use of our YouTube channel. We're going to start this off by posting a series of videos throughout the year that follow the church calendar. Now, you may already be wondering, well, we use the church calendar. We follow the lectionary on Sunday mornings. But there's so much of the church calendar that we don't interact with in our time in church on Sundays. The Lutheran Church in America, over time, has lost the practice of focusing more on important dates, important events, and important people and figures in the church over time. It's just a practice that's been lost and used less and less. And so even liturgical churches that follow the church calendar do so kind of at a base minimum uh, on the Sundays of the church here, but not necessarily looking at the rest of the dates. I believe it's important that we do so because as we look to our history as Christians, as we look to important figures, events, commemorations, and feasts, which Lutherans rightly observe, we will gain a more robust understanding of who we are as children of God, as those who are baptized into and united into Christ and in his body, and we will be able to better live in our communities, as citizens, in our homes, at our places of work, in our schools, as witnesses of Jesus Christ, as Christians. Our Christian identity is not a place that we leave here at the church when we leave the doors on Sunday morning. We take it everywhere we go. And we've all heard the idea that if we don't remember our history, if we don't remember significant people and events in history, that we are doomed to repeat some of those major mistakes and failures, which oftentimes can be world-changing types of things. And I'm going to argue that's just as much the case with our Christian history, with our church history. It is good for us to remember that our faith does not come to us in a vacuum, apart from generations and generations of Christians who were willing to sacrifice even their lives during times of persecution, willing to sacrifice many comforts of life in order to pass on the one thing needful in this life, the faith in Jesus Christ, the one true faith in him. This goes back to the apostles, who the 12 apostles who themselves learned directly from Christ, but it also goes back to the beginning of time, back to Adam and Eve, on through Abraham and the promise made to Abraham and his descendants, the word and the message that came through the prophets, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and then spread by the apostles the early church, and Christians of every generation that spread Christianity even in the darkest of times. So, it's important for us to be in touch with our past as Christians because we are part of that story. The figures that I will be talking about that we commemorate as part of the church calendar, they are members of our family in Christ, people who, in their ordinary stations in life, did extraordinary things and made extraordinary contributions because they were empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. And so we do not pray to these figures. We do not idolize them. We give thanks to God for their faithful witness in history that culminates altogether in our reception of the faith today as we look to hand down our faith to generations of Christian Christians in the future. We will be more robust Christians, have a more robust identity in Christ, if we immerse ourselves in the world as God's story has unfolded. This is our story. This is our history, and so we need to connect with that in as many ways as possible to remember 
to remember all of the things that happened to all the people that through the power of God and the Holy Spirit did remarkable things in their ordinary course of life to hand on the faith. And today we begin by remembering in a significant figure in Lutheran church history, in especially American Lutheran church history, ironically enough, from a pastor who never permanently moved to America. I'm recording this video on January 3rd, but on January 2nd, the Lutheran Church commemorates uh, Johann Conrad Wilhelm Leahy, or Lea. I've heard that name pronounced a number of different ways. I'll be pronouncing it Leahy. I think that's the way one of my professors pronounced it. But he was a pastor in Germany in the 19th century who never permanently moved to America, but had a significant contribution to make to the Lutheran Church in America. In fact, he is the founder of one of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod's two seminaries. He is the founder of the seminary in Fort Wayne, Concordia Theological Seminary, that to this day produces faithful, Christ-centered leaders and pastors who lead the church today. And so one of the major contributions theologically that Leahy made uh, to the American Lutheran Church is his focus on the Lord's Supper as the center of the Christian's life. The Lord's Supper is the place where we receive forgiveness, where we receive the gift of Christ's body and blood, but it is here at the Lord's Supper that we are equipped to go out into the world, to our homes, to our communities, to our places of work, and to our schools as faithful Christian witnesses. Evangelism flows from the strength that we receive, the nourishment that we receive in the Lord's Supper. Our words to our friends and colleagues and families, our witness of Christ to them, flows from the gifts that we receive in the Lord's Supper. This is an idea and a concept that we share uh, with the largely with the Eastern Orthodox Church. They also have this belief that everything that we do as Christians here, everything that we do as people here in this life is centered and flows from our reception of the body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. And so this is why you've seen, uh, or this is why there has been a major uptick in churches in the United States recently practicing communion weekly at all their services instead of what was the norm even 20 years ago, which was having a couple of communion services a month. But there's a movement, or a move, in celebrating the Lord's Supper on a weekly basis as the church today encounters some stressful, distressing times, difficult times, and as we look back and remember the contribution uh, that many figures made to the church, and one of those things is the reception of the body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. So with that, we give thanks to God for the faithfulness of this German pastor who never moved to America, but we give thanks to God for the impact that he had on American Lutheranism in his work and in his life of confessing Christ in Germany, in America, and as the word and name of Christ spreads over the whole world. And so I close this video by praying a prayer written by Leahy himself. Again, this prayer is found in the book Celebrating the Saints by the Reverend William Whedon. Let us pray. Most glorious Trinity, in your mercy we commit to you this day our bodies and souls, all our ways and goings, all our deeds and purposes. We pray you, so open our hearts and mouths, that we may praise your name, which above all names is holy. And since you have created us for the praise of your holy name, grant that our lives may be for your honor, and that we may serve you in love and fear. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. God's blessings, and I pray that this video blesses you, blesses your week, and uh, gives you something to think about as you live the Christian life, not only here at church, but also out in the world. God's blessings.